<laughs> now we're on. <laughs> Hi, Hi, how you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? Good, good. You got all shoveled out yesterday? Yeah, my guy showed up real late. That's why I didn't come down yesterday. I couldn't get out. We would have known in advance had we had a weather girl here. But I've that, been trying to seduce somebody to come and do be our weather girl, but not I haven't had any luck. All right, well, we'll we'll try harder. Well, I'm glad you got shoveled out and everything. You know, I was listening to the to the radio the other day, and they were doing all kinds of weird thing, weird songs, old songs, new songs. Remember that song, Beep Beep? Oh yeah, yeah, with the Ra Nash Rambler. Yeah. yeah, beep beep, beep beep. The horn went beep beep beep, and then it goes up faster and faster and faster, and then. Uh, the, I guess it ends with a Cadillac is not a car to scorn. Isn't that the truth? I think it's the truth, too. Cadillac is like so smooth, like going down the river on a boat. Well, I'll tell you. I could tell you a story uh, about driving a Cadillac. All right, I got time. Uh, well. You drove uh, a Cadillac? I personally drove a Cadillac. Nice. I, 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 I drove two Cadillacs once each time car, but this is the first Cadillac I ever drew. Okay, let's hear the story. And, uh, well, you know I'm an astrobiologist now. Yeah, how long have you been an astrobiologist? Oh, just, just a couple weeks, but before that, I always had an interest in outer space. And so, um, this will be also a story about how I uh, became so interested in flying off yeah. and seeing, seeing the yeah. world. Just so, to watch the launches? I used to watch the launches and count the astronauts. Okay. And uh, wish I were there. Well, I tried it one night, and I'll tell you the story. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Well, my uh, my father and his brothers had a store, and uh, it was a liquor store, and it, it stayed open late at, at night. And one night I was there with my Uncle Dino. I was about 15 and a half. I had a driver's license in Illinois, but I didn't have a car. No, so I 15 and a half? I didn't either. So I said, Uncle... Uh, can I borrow your car? I want to go to the drive-in. And here's was my plan. I thought that if I could drive my uncle's car to the drive-in, people would pay attention to me. Sure. I would be a celebrity. I would be somebody. I would be somebody. Because this is what exactly what my uncle's car looked like. And gaze upon that mighty thing. That is a beauty. 1960 Coupe de Ville. And nice. it was that color, white as Moby Dick. Really? It was that really? car. Look at the length of that Look trunk. Look at the length of that trunk. You could play golf in there. <laughs> yeah, you could. Now, um, my uncle was having a midlife crisis at that time. I can see. And he picked this car out so that he could be with his personal friends. And he had one of his personal friends there with him that, that evening. So he said, sure, I'm going to be here for quite a while. Why don't you take the car out? And, uh, and bring it back uh, when you're done. So I got in this car and I went to the drive-in. And what do you know? It was closed. There was nobody there. Oh. I mean, I didn't even pay attention to the fact that it was midnight. So I said, now what am I going to do? I, I've got uh, at least another hour or so. Why don't I just drive the car around? So I drove out to Salt Trail. And then I decided this is exactly the road for me and my rocket ship to explore high velocity. Oh, astrobiology is kicking in way uh, back then. I, could, I wanted to drive this to uh, the stratosphere. So I stopped the car. I floored the car. The wheels screech. And I'm zooming down the highway. Now, you know the Cadillac. You don't really feel speed because it's like... No, you don't. You don't. No, it's like no, the Titanic. Don't. Yeah, it is. You're just it floating is. like yeah. this. It's just it's kind of like the ark, it's like Noah's the ark. ark. And I'm the it's about the same size too. If Noah had given three hundred cubits by forty cubits, that that's how big that Cadillac Holy is. Holy smokes! You've got some data there. Yeah, how, I do. how heavy I do. was it? It weighed three hundred fifty-seven stone. My goodness, that'd be about eighteen times three hundred fifty-seven. That comes out to no, what? no, 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 Four, fourteen times. Oh, I'm thinking You're about the imperial stone. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the just the old fourteen-pound stone. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm yeah. off by a factor. 5,000 pounds. That's what the thing weighs. Well, if Noah had given... The so, of course, it would feel comfortable on the road. 
So I had no idea I was traveling so fast, except for the, the speedometer was up around 100. Holy smokes. And suddenly somebody way ahead pulls out. And I don't, I'm thinking, well, I'm going 100. I'm, I'm going to put the brakes on soon, like now. <laughs> so I put the brakes on, and the car went this way, and this way, and this way. No, no. I crashed through the barrier. It's made of wood back then. They had wooden uh, rails on the yeah. highways and flew off into outer space. Now, Nice. You got your wish. I got my wish. And I, all I saw was the white fence go up in front of me, and the car zooms off into space, and I land in a farmer's field that had been plowed and had been rained on. Now, <laughs> you've heard about Illinois topsoil. It's four feet, five feet deep. Yes. Black as coal. Well, the car has sunk <laughs> to here in the mud. <laughs> and um, I climb out the window and get back up to the road. I'm still fine. I didn't hurt myself or anything. And somebody saw me go over, so they stopped. Good Samaritan. He said, well, where do you live? And I said, oh, uh, 14th and Wentworth, which is Route 30 to you guys here in Pennsylvania. Okay. Lincoln Highway. Okay. So they take, uh, he takes me there, and I get out, and I'm covered in mud from head to toe. And yeah, my be. uncle says, what happened to you? And I said, oh, uncle, I got the car in a ditch. He says, oh, well, just call AAA, and they'll come, and they'll take you. So the guy at midnight, you know, it's 1 o'clock in the morning right now. He comes with his little tow truck, and we're going out to the trail. And he says, where's your car? Where's your car? He's looking all around. Where's the car? I said, point your light out there. <laughs> and he goes, yeah. he, I, I, he does all his prayers all at one moment, right then. <laughs> he gives me the hook. I take it down, 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 down. We're at the very end of the line. Of yeah, his, of his hook. Wind, winch hook. The winch hook. I put it on the back bumper. I have to dig a hole to get it in there. <laughs> I dig a hole with my hands. I put it up in there. He starts pulling on it, and it's, it sucks his truck down, down, down. <laughs> <coughs> so... <clears throat> He says, oh, we can't do this. you got to go down there, unhook that, and we're going to call the big wrecker from the city. That's just 40 miles away. He's got to bring in the big yeah. mama, the mama wrecker. Well, by that time, my uncle arrives in a taxi cab, and uh, he says, how fast were you going? Oh, I said, oh, uh, 50 miles an hour. <laughs> He says it was 150. He was closer to it yeah. than I was. And there's the car out in the field. And he says, you go home. And uh, I did. I did the taxi driver took me home. And I get home. And it's now, oh, it's 3.30, 4.30 in the morning. And I'm covered in filth. I go into the basement. I'm washing myself down. My mother says, what are you doing down there? And I go, nothing. <laughs> well, it turns out my uncle took the whole rack. Because he was persona non grata back then, he was... Uh, he and his girlfriends were uh, notorious. Uh, and uh, he didn't want my father to get any more angry at him than he already was. <laughs> so he said uh, he had fallen asleep while driving and had gone off the road. It took, so you're it took the whole the rap. <laughs> and what, another miracle that happened, besides not killing myself, was that when they got the car out of the mud and brought it into the shop, Mechanics had to spend an entire day digging mud out of it. Sure they would. But there was nothing wrong with the car. The Cadillac was so heavy, so firm and uh, solid, solid, solidly that built. There was no scratch on it. Wow. It was uh, in perfect condition. So that song was right. I guess a Cadillac is not a car to scorn. Not a car to scorn. I'll give you another look at it because it's really. It's a beauty. Wonderful. Now I have to tell you one other other thing. Okay. My uncle Dino drove this Cadillac. My uncle Guido, he drove a Lincoln Continental, and my father drove a Rambler station. <laughs> so you can imagine why I wanted to get my hands on that. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. All right. Well, that's a story. And that's I hope a, you all enjoyed it out there. It's a Curtis, great story. I hope you liked it. What do you think? Did you, you like that story, Edie? I did like that story, but it's time for Blair to go home. Oh, okay. It's time, time for me to, time go, for home. You to go home. Blair. Okay. Thanks for the story. Oh, you're welcome. Thank <laughs> you.